about last week where he has played a little bit. What a pass by Rondo. That might be the tiger. Why not? Why can't I be the MVP of the league? Why can't I be the best player in the league? The Lakers repeat back-to-back titles. The LA Lakers, the 2010 NBA champions. Welcome everybody to another episode of the NBA 2010s, and today we are talking about a special topic, giraffe classes. And throughout the 2010s, it has basically boiled down to you've had great fortunes or you're the Sacramento Kings. Anyways, consecutively terrible draft choices aside, today we are going to rank the draft classes throughout the 2010s. Being that this series is probably going to only run from here to January 1st of 2020, I unfortunately cannot include the 2019 draft class because even if I waited until the very end of this year to make this video, that's just not enough time to actually be able to evaluate most of these rookies. And yes, draft classes that are younger are going to to inherently probably have a disadvantage in this video just because there's probably guys in those classes that can still break out that can still improve yet i'm still including them because i don't need five more years to tell you that luka Doncic is better than your favorite player by the way if you would like to see him and porzingis form the next dynamic duo live next year seat geek is the best way to do so SeatGeek is the best way to buy tickets for any type of event, which would most likely be sports related for you all. They separate themselves from the pack by pulling tickets from all over the web and congregating them in one place so you don't have to spend hours price matching. On top of simplifying the searching process, each ticket is ranked with a score to let you know what would give you the best value for your purchase. And if that all wasn't enough, you even get to preview what your view would look like in the arena from each seat before you purchase. So if you're interested, be sure to pay them a visit with the link in the comment section and in the description. If you're still on the fence, consider using my promo code DOM2K to get $20 back on your first purchase. Starting off at number 9, I am going to have to slot the 2016 draft class. You know, the class where the Rookie of the Year award defaulted to Malcolm Brogdon because Ben Simmons and Joel Embiid were hurt. When you look at the names on this draft board, this is actually turning out to be a pretty decent class, it just lacks star power. Three years later, the only player from this class that's actually an all-star is Ben Simmons. However, that is not the only way we are evaluating these classes. Of course, we're looking at other support players, players that you maybe could consider a star player, they just haven't actually made it yet. Like, I think Pascal Siakam would fit into that bill. Then you have a lot of other good players players and players that are still finding their way. Jalen Brown has still got excellent potential. Brandon Ingram before the heart problems actually was breaking out. People were very excited to see what Deontay Murray could have brought to the table before the torn ACL. Brogdon, despite having the worst rookie of the year throughout the 2010s, has turned into a very good player. Buddy Heald is still finding his way. And Karis Levert was also breaking out before that gruesome leg injury last year that actually turned out just to look gruesome. It wasn't actually gruesome. Anyways, I don't think there's a whole lot of debate here. I don't believe in coincidences and I already had this last on my list before I realized that it housed the worst rookie of the year throughout this decade. Of course it's not about how these players start, it's about how they progress and finish, but so far we're left with one and a half stars maybe, and a lot of great support pieces. There are definitely better drafts than this. 2018 is going to come second to last, but I want to qualify that by saying this class is only a year old, and that is a heavy part of the reason it's back here. I think when we come back in maybe two or three years, this class will have moved way up, but right now it's still left with a lot of ifs. That being said, it's one of the only classes where you can think off the top of your head that the top five picks, none of them disappointed. Seriously. DeAndre Aiden clearly has the potential to be a cornerstone. Marvin Bagley found his way. Luka Doncic is everything everyone thought he was going to be. Jaron Jackson is an extremely bright spot for Memphis, and even Trey Young found his way after playing terrible in the summer league, having a shaky start to the season. By the end of the year, he'd given people who were bored something to talk about. They actually started trying to take Luka's Rookie of the Year away from him. So the top five is clearly special, but look outside of the top five. You still got Shai Gilgis, Mitchell Robinson, who was one of the only positive things to happen to New York basketball this decade, Lonnie Walker had a decent start, Landry Shamit is a shooter, and we still have to see Michael Porter. Now, I have to admit, the outlook is not great so far. The guy hasn't played one game, he got injured again this summer, I don't even know at the time of this video if he is going to be ready for the start of the season and that, that, that just feels really bad knowing how injuries usually go, but then you look at someone like Joel Embiid and think, maybe he can figure it out because Michael Porter Jr. was probably the best player in this draft, or at least the second best player when we were coming into it before he had that back injury. So the main thing to take with you about the 
2018 draft is that there is a lot of potential for star power here. Now, you may notice that the draft board was kind of short, and that has a lot to do with the fact that, again, it's only been a year. A few years later, we might start to see actual role players and support pieces built out from this, but that's definitely kind of a difficult role to fill as a rookie, so there aren't as many here right now. Either way, this has potential to hop multiple spots. Throughout the 2020s, you could wind up with five or six all-stars from this one draft, and that is very significant compared to the others. Next up is the 2017 draft class, and this class still has a lot of ifs, but it's been good to us so far. Take Lonzo Ball for instance. People wanted him to be a bust so badly off the incidents of LeVar Ball, and despite all the injuries and the trade, that hasn't happened yet. As a matter of fact, I think the Pelicans are going to be a great place for him. I think that is going to be a great restart to his career. Once he gets past not being able to shoot, he's still got star potential. We don't know exactly where Jason Tatum is going yet. He went from nearly helping lead a team to the NBA Finals without two of its stars straight into a regression year but with a change in system and a team that's nowhere near as stacked and doesn't have as many egos maybe he'll come back a bit either way we kind of know what he's capable of De'Aaron Fox showed improvement last year and then the two stars from this draft and they're not all stars yet but they are clearly 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 future all stars Laurie Morkinen and Donovan Mitchell these are two players that you can look at right now and clearly say that they're going to be cornerstones for a franchise throughout the 2020s and then outside of them you still have great support pieces for teams. John Collins is coming alive. Terrence Ferguson was starting to play a decent role for OKC last year in light of Andre Roberson being gone. Jared Allen, who should definitely be on the cover of the next NBA Street game. OG Ananobi, who would have just made Toronto even better in the NBA Finals. Kyle Kuzma, who I'm a little bit afraid for his progression being that he may have to come off the bench this year. Don't know yet, but that is something I've been scared about. Either way, we've clearly seen his potential. Derek White, who was about to get a draft retrospective video because he was going off in the play he is exactly what you think of when you talk about a San Antonio Spurs player. You never heard of him before, then all of a sudden he's hooping. The 2017 draft has already given us some great players, but it has the potential to get even better. 2013 was long looked at as one of the worst draft classes of the decade, but here six years later, it has rebounded pretty nicely, so I think the sixth spot is appropriate. Of course, the most notable thing here is that it produced an MVP and a possible face of the league in Giannis Antetokounmpo. Ironically, that's also one of the players that helped this draft class be looked at so badly because it took him a while to break out. We didn't really, really see Giannis until around 2017. Then the only other stars here would be CJ McCollum and Victor Oladipo. But some of the other guys here have made a decent name for themselves. Rudy Gobert has become a top rim protector. Steven Adams has made a habit of low-key being one of the better centers in the NBA. And then after that, yeah, I'm not gonna lie, it basically comes down to role players. Otto Porter has heavily disappointed up to this point. But with his new star on a young team, it's possible he could become a notable name from this draft, but he's getting up there now. We didn't even realize that this draft is six years old. But sometimes it just takes a while, like Victor Oladipo. He literally became a star player a year ago. Of course, we don't know what's actually going on with him or where he's going to end up because that was a very serious injury he had. But for the purposes of ranking drafts, the type of player he became is what's important here. This class is very low on star power and doesn't even have that many great support pieces. I think it earns his sixth spot. In hindsight, the star power from the 2014 draft was definitely disappointing, but it's given us a lot of names, a lot of solid names. The only definitive stars that have come from this draft are Joel Embiid and Nikola Jokic, and it's pretty ironic that the same draft gave us some next generation big men. Yet, the star power is disappointing because upon receiving Andrew Wiggins and Jabari Parker, we thought we were maybe getting future Hall of Famers. That's how much hype was surrounding them. We already know the story with Wiggins, and Jabari Parker is almost nowhere to be found five years later. Later. But look at all the names we did find that play important roles for their teams. Aaron Gordon, Marcus Smart, Julius Randle, Dario Saric who almost had Rookie of the Year, Zach Levine, he's definitely going to be a star, and that's after the torn ACL, Gary Harris, Clint Capella, and even Spencer Dinwiddie who was a late bloomer. What this draft lacks in star power has been made up by a good number of support pieces. This is kind of what I expect from a draft class like 2017. 
2015 is turning out to be a very top heavy draft but hey star power runs the league and this is like a snapshot of what 2018 can turn to if everything comes to fruition out of this class you've got carl towns d'angelo russell porzingis and devin booker very clearly for potential stars montrez harrell also comes from this draft and although i don't know if he'll ever actually be an all-star he has clearly made a name of himself in la playing bigger than his size and that's interesting because when he got drafted in houston i remember people saying that that was a steal and it's taken a while for it to come to light but it clearly has in la despite how shallow this draft may look carl towns porzingis and devin booker those are players that you can see as faces of a franchise you may call devin booker stats empty you may call carl towns soft we don't even know how the torn acl is going to affect chris Ops porzingis yet but just remember all of these guys are really really young the 2010s have been a lot about development for them and a lot of it has been them playing basketball on teams that aren't really going anywhere they haven't played meaningful basketball yet so seeing them with support hopefully throughout the 2020s it could do a lot for their standing in the league 2010 was a pretty good draft. It is a draft now that nine years later we can look at and say injuries have all but destroyed, but throughout the 2010s and what these players gave us, it was pretty good. John Wall, who is probably now gone, DeMarcus Cousins, definitely gone, Gordon Hayward, who knows if he is ever going to be the same. It's kind of like the last man standing is Paul George, and he may be headed for a championship this year. Very top heavy, very star heavy, and not a crazy amount of names after them. A lot of the guys from the 2010 draft, they really aren't here anymore. But for what it's worth, Paul George and DeMarcus Cousins at one point were both kind of like the next big things. DeMarcus Cousins was the best big man in the league at one point, and he played a big part in this whole 2010 shift of big men. This thing where guys can do everything from handling the ball to banging down low to shooting. He was very integral in bringing that to life. Really kind of like the revival of the big man throughout this decade, if you will. Then Paul George, he was challenging LeBron James for dominance in the East before the Pacers were even really looked at like that. The broken leg put that on Paul and he still came back last year and had an MVP campaign. A name you might laugh at even being on this board is Greg Monroe, but I implore you to watch my draft retrospective video. I think that one was done for, yeah, it was actually done for Paul George. And although Greg Monroe has all but disappeared and he's been a journeyman, he was actually decent at the beginning of this decade before guys like DeMarcus Cousins took over. That's why he's here. That's just the explanation for that. Larry Sanders was once a great big man and he all but quit the NBA for personal reasons. And then just some decent names like Eric Bledsoe. Avery Bradley at a time was very decent when he was with the Celtics. This is a class that is ultimately defined by its stars, and without injuries, I think these would have been a lot of leading names throughout the 2010s. Especially if they had found themselves in better situations, that really goes for John Wall, and DeMarcus Cousins as a matter of fact. The 2012 draft is strong. We've got MVP material here in Anthony Davis. You've got top point guard material in Damian Lillard. Draymond Green has been an integral piece of the Golden Dynasty. Chris Middleton is just recently an all-star. I only have a star next to Andre Drummond's name because he was a two-time all-star throughout the 2010s. Obviously, he is not like a star big man, but I owe him that star. He earned it. Bradley Beal will any minute now be playing meaningful basketball and people will recognize how good he actually is. I think people really know that's why they want him traded so badly, but of course, playing in Washington Washington, just it, not as many people are gonna see it. And then, yeah, after that, the support pieces kind of drop off a bit. Harrison Barnes seemed like he was gonna be really good at a point, kind of like up until the 2016 NBA Finals. He's not bad, don't get me wrong, he's just not what we thought he was when he was with the Warriors. Evan Fournier playing for the Magic is actually a hooper. Doesn't look like a hooper, doesn't have a hooper's name, but he is a hooper. Yeah, point blank, this draft produced stars and a couple of the biggest names we have in our game today going into the 2020s. But for what it's worth, I think that you could argue this draft of 2010. Look, you can't beat the 2011 draft, okay? Do you see how thick this draft board is? Not only does it have a lot of stars, it has a lot of support pieces. And not just any stars, we're talking about like meaningful stars. Kyrie Irving, one of the better talents we've had throughout the 2010s and an NBA champion. Klay Thompson, I don't know where you rank him as being one of the greatest shooters of all time, but he is definitely there. Perhaps the greatest heat check player of all time. Kawhi Leonard, he possibly just had the greatest individual playoff run we've seen. Kimball Walker, who is finally playing in a market where he'll be seen. 
I think he'll be appreciated more now. He hasn't gotten to play one meaningful game of basketball in his career yet, but clearly the talent is there. We even got Isaiah Thomas, number 60, the last pick in the draft, 5'9". When has a guy like that ever been mentioned in an MVP race? When has a guy like that been averaging like 30 points? Look, he's not around anymore, his hip gave out. Maybe some teams have given up on him, but nonetheless, he was a part of this draft and he was a pretty decent player leading up to the time that he became one of the better point guards in the league. And then look at all the other names we still have after that. We've got the Morris twins. Nikola Vucevic. He ran into a wall in Toronto this year, but he's still a very skilled big man. Support pieces like Iman Shumpert, Tobias Harris, who maybe could have been an all-star last year. Kenneth Fareed had a good start to the 2010s, and that's why I put him here, because he went to Houston and proved that he could clearly still play. Nikola Mirotic decided to quit the NBA, decided he would be happier overseas, but he was a decent role player for his time here. Tristan Thompson was once really decent. Cancer, Biombo. This is a pretty stacked draft. Before Chandler Parsons took a seemingly permanent seat on the bench. He seemed like he had potential to be a star player. Not a superstar, not a consistent all-star, just a, a, a good player, alright? Yeah, to me, with the players that this has produced over this decade, it is very difficult to find something better than this. Even if you think like 2015 is going to be more star-heavy at the end of the day, this one has the benefit of being star-heavy and being laced with support. I honestly would not swap it for anything on this list, but maybe you disagree. So, whether you do or not, make sure to leave that in the comment section, hit the like button and sub if you want to see more videos like this, and hit the bell next to my name if you want notifications when the next 2010s video drops. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all on the next one.